Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2022 Year 9 Division Debating SA Grand Final Debate. My name is Diesel Kerraru, and I'm the chairman of this debate. And the timekeeper is... Sorry. And the timekeeper is Jessica Nora, sorry. The topic of this debate is that the online slash virtual learn online slash virtual learning is better than traditional schooling. The affirmative team seated to my right is from Pulteney Grammar School, consisting of the first speaker, Jeffrey Wang, second speaker, Ethan Davis, and third speaker, Charlie Grivel. And the negative team seated to my left is from Mitcham Girls High School, consisting of first speaker, Sakriti Sharma, second speaker, Ella Kamau, and third speaker, Zoe Abbott. This grand final debate will be judged by a panel of five adjudicators who are Ms. Boyd Turner, Mr. Martin, Ms. Lowen, Mr. Hazel, and Mr. Parcelitis. Speaking time of this debate is five minutes. A single warning bell will sound at four minutes and a double bell will sound at five. A continuous bell may be rung 30 seconds after the speaking time, in which case the speaker must sit down immediately. Please switch off your mobile phones and other electronic devices. I declare this debate open and call upon the first affirmative speaker, Jeffrey Wang. At the 2020 CanvasCon online experience, which is the largest meeting of online educators in the world, attendees learnt about an online platform, PICX, which is still running at Playford International College today. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chairman, PICX included a whole array of engaging challenges. Students watched, filmed, and uploaded various videos. They completed tasks in the yard and went on virtual discussion boards. Playford's former digital director, Mr. Nathan Sini, said that PICX was so popular that 92% of students said it was having a positive influence on their school. This inspiring example is just one demonstration of how online learning is better than traditional schooling. Before I move on to my team's points, I would like to characterize and define today's topic. We define online slash virtual learning as asynchronous and or synchronous education of a person that takes place with the use of the internet. Just to clarify, ladies and gentlemen, asynchronous means learning that allows people to learn at their own pace anywhere. It is important to realize that online learning can be done at a school where a teacher is teaching virtually or students are learning asynchronously. Just because they are located in a school building does not make this traditional schooling. Better than as a more satisfactory approach and traditional schooling as a teacher-centered approach that incorporates face-to-face -face learning. This typically consists of students in age-dependent groups learning at the same time and at the same pace. Today, I will be presenting two strong points. First, I will talk about how online and virtual learning has adapted and developed as our understanding of how people learn has advanced. This knowledge has been embraced and incorporated into online slash virtual learning models. Secondly, I will discuss how learner analytics possible with online virtual learning can better facilitate personalization of the curriculum at a level that cannot possibly be achieved in traditional schooling. Our second speaker will talk about the advantages of asynchronous learning and of the flipped classroom. Our third speaker will rebut and sum up our team case. Now, to my first point. The use of online and or virtual learning has been dramatically accelerated by the COVID-19 pandemic. We have moved away from the teacher-centered model of education towards one that focuses on the needs of each individual student. Online learning first evolved from distance learning, where a student worked in isolation to complete a set course. And then it changed to blended learning, a fusion style of distance learning and traditional face-to-face -face education. Finally, online learning was born, the end product of all these positive changes. Online learning includes the chance for learners to interact through chat rooms, blogs, and Zoom calls, its flexibility can also mean that it can still take place within traditional schools, just done asynchronously. It allows learners to work through the curriculum at their own pace and connect with students from interstate or even from the other side of the world, thus enhancing a feeling of global community. This model is student-centered 
and allow students to be responsible for their own learning. In contrast, the, teach, the traditional schooling model is limited, as it is teacher-driven, age-dependent, and synchronous, thus proving that online slash virtual learning is better. My second point is about learning analytics. The University of Queensland defines learning analytics as measurement, collection, analysis, and reporting of data about learners and their context for purposes of understanding and optimizing learning and the environment in which it occurs. Simply put, learner analytics allows students to better analyze a student's strengths and weaknesses. This supports teachers to know when to adapt their practices, processes, and systems. This may seem overwhelming, but teachers and schools who are utilizing online slash virtual learning models are already able to gather this data and are keeping pace with the current shift to using learner analytics to personalize learning. In the traditional schooling model, this type of data gathering is extremely difficult and cumbersome to manage. For example, the software PlayPosit, a program which requires students to watch an instructional video and answer questions at certain points, allow educators to see how long students took on specific questions and whether they answered them correctly or not, among other things. This allows for specific weak points in an individual's knowledge to be found. This process is not only automatic, it is also easier than ever to implement. This clearly shows that online learning is better than traditional schooling. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, it is clear that online learning provides an easier way for learning analytics to be obtained and detailed. In addition to this, it has had a proven history of positive changes over its evolution in the past. Thank you and have a good day. I call upon the first negative speaker, Sukriti Sharma. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for our debate is that online slash virtual learning is better than traditional schooling. We agree with the definition given by the affirmative team. However, we, the negative team, strongly believe that this statement is false. The first speaker of the affirmative team has tried to tell you that online learning is better because it has adapted with technological advancement. However, this is incorrect, as it is harder to talk to teachers in online learning. Students are able to talk in chat rooms, yes, but as I will highlight today in my argument, social interaction is key and very important, and online learning and these interactions are just not good enough. He also said that the curriculum can be personalized for the students. This is false, because not everyone can even access online school whereas the majority can access traditional schooling. Finding weak points is also harder with less resources for every subject, as our second speaker will state in her argument today. Today, as first speaker, I will be talking to you about how online and virtual schooling does not teach students the social skills that they need, and how it is detrimental for the mental and physical health of the students. Our second speaker will be talking about how online school fails to suit to practical subjects and how it is inaccessible to many families, making it unequal. Our third speaker will rebut and sum up our team case. I will be discussing two points. My first point is that online and virtual schooling fails to teach students social skills and emotional intelligence. This is because if students don't go to school, where do they learn vital social knowledge and skills that they need? A study by language development professor Bruno Vodosky states that, quote, Children learn with their peers, sharing their feelings and thoughts about learning with others, end quote. Online learning limits physical interactions to just, just those with parents, stunting children's social growth. Additionally, education expert Dijk van der Graaf has stated that the effects of virtual learning as seen in the COVID-19 pandemic on younger children have been detrimental to their social development. It is well established that developing social skills is vital to a student's future. In a study done by the Pennsylvania State University, 
Learning social skills was found to greatly increase the chances of students graduating from school and college and led them into a healthier life that avoided risky behaviour. It was also found that greater social skills provided students with monetary benefits. Each dollar spent in social skill development was set to equal an $11 profit in the student's future. The concept is also supported by the Education Board of Victoria, who state that a children's future success is strongly linked to their capacity to express and be understood. As social psychology professor Shauna Waters, who links social skills to workplace successes, supports this. Clearly, it is vital for students to go into traditional schooling environments so that they may learn vital social skills for their education and for their future. Now to my second point, that traditional school is much better for mental and physical health than online school. This is because school is a safe place for building relationships, learning responsibilities and getting out of the house. Communicating with friends, peers and teachers is an extremely important aspect to the development of good mental health. Edu educational psychologist Terence Bowles found that friendships between students provide a sense of belonging and greater connection. Kevin McGrath, a researcher at Integrated Behavioural Health Research Institute, states that students who build close connections with their teachers are more likely to interact positively with others and excel academically. Additionally, in traditional schooling, you have access to support networks outside of your home, which means that you have a safe space where you can talk to mental health professionals. Moreover, physical health is also impacted by online schooling. Many students walk or ride to school, move between classrooms, and participate in physical education in and out of class. But how is any of this achieved if school is online? Dr. Pooja Sharma at the Institute of Physiotherapy conducted a study which showed that light emitted through screens disrupts natural sleep cycles and has a negative impact on eyesight. She also found that 56 to 66% of students in the research sample stated that they had some sort of negative impact on their postural health from online schooling. So I ask you, how can we say that online school is better than traditional schooling when it has proven to have such negative effects on both mental and physical health of the students. So, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, we the negative team strongly and undoubtedly believe that traditional schooling is better than online learning. Thank you. I call upon the second affirmative speaker, Ethan Davis. As the world we live in changes to embrace tech futures, how and what we teach in our education system will also be reshaped to keep up to date with the growing demands of the 21st century. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. What this quote by RMIT education professor Tricia McLaughlin makes clear is that traditional schooling methods must be reshaped in order to keep up with the, method, with the needs of the 21st century. We, the affirmative team, believe that online and virtual learning is the best way to do this and is therefore better than traditional schooling. I will now rebut the negative team's points. The first speaker for the negative has tried to say that there are no support networks at home and there is less exercise from going to, if you don't go to school. However, if the negative team agrees that online learning can be done at school, these points are irrelevant. They have also said that students suffer from a lack of interaction and social isolation. The first speaker for the negative has said that online learning leads to social isolation and mental health issues. 
I think we can all agree that the months of online learning that some places had to endure must have been very difficult and isolating. However, I have two points to make about this. One, in the COVID type situation where online learning was much better, is much better than any alternative, as at least it offered some interaction with the teachers and schoolmates. Situations where students were sent home worksheets and had no interaction at all with others would have been terrible. And two, as we pointed out in our definition, online learning can take place in a classroom where students move at their own pace through online content and which schools are increasingly starting to use. Today, our first speaker has explained that as research into how we learn has progressed, online learning has improved. And it is now at a point where it can offer a stimulating, bespoke educational experience to students. Jeffrey has also discussed learner analytics and the huge advantage it provides educators seeking to better analyze their students' strengths and weaknesses. Advantages which enable more personalized learning and make online and virtual learning better than traditional schooling. Today, I will be discussing two points. Firstly, I would like to discuss the advantages that are offered by online asynchronous learning. Asynchronous learning is when a student is provided with content by their teacher on an online platform and they move at their own pace through the curriculum. The advantages here are numerous. For the thousands of learners who cannot attend class in a traditional setting due to illness, disability, geographical disadvantage, the need to care for family or work full time, the ability to access curriculum online at a time convenient to them is absolutely invaluable. Additionally, online and virtual schooling can occur much more cost effectively than traditional schooling, giving more people access to education of their choice. The other huge advantage of asynchronous learning is its potential to further personalize the schooling of students. With the type of online learning which occurs with tools such as Education Perfect, the learner's personal experience, strengths and habits are tracked in order to provide a tailored educational experience. In Education Perfect, teachers can set different activities for students depending on their ability level. Those who find the work too easy can, and need a challenge can easily be given an extension activity. And those who need further reinforcement can be given supplementary material. The teacher can see which type of questions are causing problems for the student and then can work one-on-one -on -one with them because they are not spending time on chalk and talk. Now to my second point about another form of asynchronous learning, the flipped classroom. The traditional model of learning has primarily revolved around a teacher-centered classroom, where teachers focus on conveying information. This type of instruction has forced students to be merely receptors of information, rather than active participants in their own learning. The main goal of a flipped classroom is to enhance student learning by reversing the traditional model of a classroom, focusing on student understanding rather than on lecture. To do this, teachers post short video lectures online for students to view at home prior to the next class. This allows class time to be devoted to mastering the material through one-on-one -on -one time with teachers, collaborative learning exercises and discussions. The result here is a deeper level of understanding. Mr. Chairman, parents and guests, I'm sure that the advantages of online and virtual learning are now clear. Online learning offers students the advantages of an inclusive, personalized and engaging curriculum in a way that traditional schooling cannot. Online and virtual learning is simply the better option for today's world. Thank you for listening. I call upon the second negative speaker, Ella Kamau. Good afternoon, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for our debate is that online slash virtual learning is better than traditional schooling. We, the negative team, believe this statement to be false. The second speaker on the affirmative team has tried to tell you about its advantages. But online learning is not more engaging than learning in a classroom. 
This is incorrect as traditional schooling allows students to experience face-to-face -face learning, which has been proven to be more engage engaging. According to the National Library of Medicine, students expressed strong preference for class discussions to be conducted face-to-face, -face, and they felt more engaged when they received the attention that they need. It's also much more cost-friendly for online learning to not be the main point, as devices cost a lot of money. Not to mention the engaging factor, which I will talk more about later, about how face-to-face -face learning is 10 times more engaging than online. Our first speaker has already stated that online learning neglects to teach students that social, social skills that they need and that improves both mental and physical health of students. Today, I'll be talking to you about how online learning is not suited to practical subjects, which means you will not be able to learn new physical skills from online learning, and that online slash virtual learning is not suited to all types of families and is increasing inequality. Now to my first point, that online learning does not cater to practical tasks. This is because practical su subjects as such as physical education, performing arts, and even sciences are impacted negatively by online school. They require skills and materials that can only be provided in a face-to-face -face learning environment. For example, Ross Warby, dance choreographer and associate and professor at UCLA World Arts and Cultures Dance, stated that drastic change in learning to process required her to rely on her dialogue, which was almost impossible for a subject like dance. Moreover, physical education and the performing arts have seen similar issues, which is detrimental to students and teachers, as physical learning is just so difficult in these conditions. As stated by Professor, Professor Jesse S. Barrett from the Learning National University of, in the Philippines, online learning also restricts students from performing practicals, going to field trips, and doing their assignments due to lack of material and space. Even the restraints involve core subjects like science. Physical science is fundamental in understanding the concepts and different ideas of science, such as biology, chemistry, physics, as stated by John Holman, the Emirates professor at University of York. Experiments that are revolving around chemicals, they cannot be recreated in a home setting. Additionally, the sheer excitement of conducting experiments is taken out of the equation when watching a video does not evoke the same joy as doing an experiment or witnessing one being conducted by a teacher in a face-to-face -face learning environment. How is virtual learning better than traditional schooling when it takes out all these vital hands-on factors? Now to my second point, that online learning is not suited to all family types. This is because online learning requires certain equipment and environment, which is not achievable for all families. This includes access to technology, Wi-Fi, and a calm and quiet environment away from family responsibilities and interruptions. Parents who support their children's learning without work commitments and language barriers. This criteria is not accessible for everyone, therefore online learning only increases inequality. Throughout education, according to a recent data from the National Centre of Education Statistics, 14% of children aged 3 to 18 have no access to the internet, and 70% of children live in households without a laptop or a desktop. This technology is the core of online learning and would drastically affect these children's education and ability to learn. How can we justify that online education is better than traditional forms of education when we're clearly singling out the less fortunate? For example, how devastating not the, to not have the necessities for online schooling. Can, it can be seen within the COVID-19 pandemic. The Bourne News website surveyed 1,416 students which revealed some negative statistics about online learning within the pandemic. 75% of English students found it difficult to access quiet spaces during studying. Online schooling, during online schooling, 52 were affected about how slow the internet was and damaged their learning. 18% lacked the internet which left them behind due to digital poverty. It is clearly discriminating towards students who do not have access to the necessary requirements. So, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, we, the negative team, strongly believe that online learning is not better than traditional schooling. It as it allows students to learn practically and it caters to all family dynamics. For the evidence that we have gathered, it is clear that online schooling is not better than traditional schooling. Tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. Thank you.
I call upon the third affirmative speaker, Charlie Grivel. Good day, ladies and gentlemen, Mr Chairman. The topic for our debate is that online such virtual learning is better than traditional schooling. We have shown you all throughout our speeches today that online learning gives us wonderful new technologies and methods to help individual student outcomes. We have shown you that online learning is a much more satisfactory model of education than traditional schooling for our 21st century aspirations. I will now rebut the case made by the negative team. Throughout the debate today, I have observed two themes. The first theme of socialisation and relationships as presented by the negative team. The negative team have said that online learning threatens to delay or halt the development of social skills or potentially restrict, potentially restrict relationships between students. Of course, on the surface this might seem true, but if you look closer you can see that online learning is still very much social. Throughout today's debate, our team has discussed the many ways in which online learning can be beneficial for our education. For students who usually wouldn't be at school, they can engage in online learning. This, along with a plethora of online communication platforms, can ensure that social skill development is not at risk. When online learning is, is present in classrooms, as the negative team have agreed, students can asynchronously work together, conversing with one another and continuing to develop the same social skills as they would with traditional learning. Next, I will address the theme of quality of learning and engagement as presented by the negative team. The negative team have, have attempted to say that the quality of online learning and student engagement is completely inferior to that of traditional schooling. However, we, uh, we utterly disagree with this. We agree that any learning model, when not utilised well, can be boring, but that online learning, online such virtual learning, has the potential to be much more engaging than traditional schooling has ever been. To quote James Bates, a technical learning consultant at CGS, an IT firm that specialises in online learning technology, the most profound words will remain unread unless you can keep the learner engaged. Students today have been brought up by technology and are motivated by different factors than the students of yesteryear with traditional schooling, which according to a report by the Mitchell Institute, has not evolved hugely from the models set up during the Industrial Revolution, does not take into account. However, the potential for greater student engagement in, on the online learning scenario is endless. For example, a study from San Francisco State University found that gamification in the form of online quizzes had a huge impact on the students' desire to learn the material. Students who took part in gamified quizzes were a lot more likely to take more quizzes and continue their learning on the subject, but those types with traditional methods, such as worksheets and tests, would uh, lose their desire to con continue with the content. The first negative speaker said that online learning results in more inequality. While students with access to less advanced technology may be separated with students who could form, afford the newest computers, for example, here in South Australia, all public schools are legally obligated to provide state-funded laptops for all SA high school students, in accordance with a $70 million deal made by the Labor government, Labor government in 2018. If the state is required to provide technology to our students, the inequalities that online learning could expose are irrelevant. Their second negative speaker has said that some materials are only at school. If the negative team has agreed that online learning can take place at school, there is no reason why field trips and practicals and all that sort of stuff can't still happen. Their second speaker also said that internet isn't available at all, at all homes. Many schools across South Australia will at least have something along the lines of the school will negotiate with the family on a case-by-case -case basis in their ICT or e-learning policy. The internet is a key part of our lives now and should be recognised as part of education, as most homework and traditional schoolwork is still done on computers. Also, even if the internet will never be available at some students' homes due to reasons outside the school's control, it does not exclude said students from online learning technology at school within the classroom. I will now summarise our team's case. Our first speaker, Jeffrey, has discussed the evolution of education and the gradual implementation of online learning within our schools. The advent of the internet, com uh, combined with distance learning, introduced online learning systems to education. Traditional schooling is no longer the more satisfactory option for our, more for our modern learners. He has also spoken about the learning analytics that can arise from these online asynchronous learning systems. To quote a study from the University of Queensland, learning analytics is measurement, collection, analysis and reporting of data about learners in their context for purposes of understanding and optimising learning and the environment in which it occurs. These analytics serve as valuable tools for teachers to modify course content to better suit individual learners. Our second speaker, Ethan, has shown you the advent of asynchronous learning and how this is hugely tied into online learning. Online learning systems can be used in tie with, in tie with asynchronous learning to assign work, for example, which can then can be done asynchronously. The clear benefits of this system, made a reality by online learning systems, show why it's much better than traditional schooling. 
He went on to discuss the flipped classroom, a method of education where the classroom is used for work and one-on-one -on -one discussions between teachers and students, further empowering communication between teachers and students, even while still doing online learning. Online learning is a key part in making this happen, proving that it's better than traditional schooling. Ladies and gentlemen, to come to a conclusion for our team, if you look under the surface, you can see a brilliant method of learning that puts students at the heart of our education system. Ladies and gentlemen, we, the affirmative team, strongly believe that online slash virtual learning is better than traditional schooling. Thank you. I call upon the third negative speaker, Zoe Abbott. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for our debate is that online slash virtual learning is better than traditional schooling. We, the negative team, strongly believe that this statement is false. The first affirmative speaker has tried to tell you that online learning is better because it allows students to learn what, at what level they believe they should be learning at. This is wrong because if students can pick and choose when they want and need acceleration, who's to say that they couldn't abuse this ability by skipping out on topics they didn't feel like doing? Or what if students thought they were a master of a topic and decided to skip it? They could actually end up behind their peers because what they didn't know, what they didn't know. And even if they are good at something, is there not always more to learn? Traditional schooling forces each child to participate and engage with all sectors, subjects, and elements of their learning. This is why it is better. He also said that online learning is more easily accessible for all students. This is inaccurate because as our second speaker has explained, this is not the case at all. Under half of the world has internet and computer access in their homes, according to leading statistic provider Statista. That leaves around 3.99 billion people who cannot access online or virtual learning. How is this accessible? However, statistics states that 90% of people currently receive a primary education in traditional school. This shows that traditional schooling is more accessible to everyone. Additionally, the cost of internet access and individual device ownership is astounding when it is compound compounded by a larger family or must be achieved with those who earn less income. As explained by our second speaker, this decreases equity in education. And online learning is not even effective for many physical subjects. What is the point of easily accessible school if it is not effective school? Online learning is less effective and less accessible than traditional schooling. The first and third of affirmative speaker have tried to tell you that online learning is more effective and engaging than traditional learning. However, this is false because it's just not true in so many scenarios. As stated by our second speaker, online learning cannot possibly be as effective as traditional school for physical subjects. These include most of the more enjoyable subjects which break up the monotonous school day, engaging students further. Additionally, without friends or peers, who will students interact with in their school day? How will they ask for help and stay engaged in learning if they don't have anyone to share or conversate with about it? Additionally, many students found online classes over the pandemic just plain boring, which does not bode well for its engagement overall. Harvard education professor Stephanie Jones says that online activities were too easy, less meaningful, and were not fun to most students surveyed in her pandemic studies. This shows that to the masses of students, online learning was less engaging than traditional schooling. Therefore, increased engagement is more of a dream than a reality of online learning. The second affirmative speaker has tried to tell you that because online learning can be done in school, it will be. This is wrong because although the definition says that online learning can happen at school, that does not necessarily mean that it will be. 
If students can stay at home, many will, despite its devastating effects on their mental health, as highlighted by my first speaker. This may not be a student choice. Parents may ask students to ask to stay home in order to take care of siblings or to clean their room. In fact, according to education professor Stephanie Jones, male stu sorry, female students had been suffering in the, during the pandemic because of exactly this reason. The third affirmative speaker has tried to tell you that online learning is still maintains social skill development, the same as traditional learning would. This is wrong because, as our second speaker has further explained, this is just not the case. While students can interact online, they cannot learn the body language cues or social skills that they could by talking to peers physically, by interacting with their teachers and students. He also said that physical subjects can still be done online because online learning can be at school. This is wrong because, as I have previously stated, can does not mean it will. Also, if the learning is still to be done online and not teacher-driven, who can give real-time feedback to the students on their technique in subjects like dance or drama? Now to summarise my team's case. Our first speaker spoke to you about how traditional schooling is much better for students' mental and physical health. She also said that online learning cannot possibly teach students social skills like the ones cultivated through real-life interactions in the traditional schooling system. Our second speaker spoke to you about how online learning is unsuited to practical subjects because students at home cannot access the resources or in-person help. She also explained how online learning is not achievable for all families, especially those with money struggles, meaning it in increases inequality within our education system. So, Madam Chairman, Mr Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, we, the Negative Team, believe that traditional learning in schools is much better than virtual learning. Seeing teachers and peers in person is vital for students' social skills, health and ability to learn, especially in physical subjects. Thank you. I call upon a representative of the adjudication panel to come forward and award the debate. Thank you, Mr Chairman. In another very close decision, this one split again 3-2, the debate was awarded to the negative team.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attendance. I now declare this debate closed. Sorry, sorry. I call a member of the runner-up team to give a vote of thanks, sorry. Um, thank you very much to everyone, like parents, uh, our two teachers and coaches who helped us through this by giving up their free time to make sure that we were prepared for this debate. And thanks very much to the uh, negative team for putting up an excellent um, debate today. And yeah, you deserve the win. I call upon a member of the winning team for, uh, to second the, that vote of thanks. Hi. Um, first of all, thank you for Debating SA for organising this whole competition. Um, debating is like such a big part of all of our lives, obviously, um, and it's just really great to have that like creative outlet to explore like current issues. Um, also, thank you so much to the affirmative team. It was such an amazing debate. Um, all of the like rebuttals were hard fought. They were very challenging. Um, thank you to our parents and friends for supporting us today, taking us here, um, and helping us like hearing us out. <laughs> Uh, thank you to Parliament House for hosting. Um, oh, sorry. Okay, thank you to the timekeeper and chair person. And then thank you so much to all five of our adjudicators, um, plus Pete and Mr. Tran. So thanks, guys. Now, for the second time, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attendance. I now declare this debate closed.